Hey champs and welcome to another episode of the Keeping Carlson Short Shifts podcast. I am your host, Louis Ezekiel, and the E is for end times because, folks, we are in uncharted waters here and staring the hockey apocalypse in the face. Of course, we are very glad that the NHL took the safe route, but it is brand new challenges for fantasy hockey. So joining me here tonight for our hockey apocalypse uh, group therapy session is the deacon of downtime, the duke of dad life, the sultan of social distancing, Brian Com. Hello, Lewis. Hello, everybody. It's so nice to be here making my short shifts debut, uh, breathing the same esteemed air that, that you and Ben get to often that Elon has occasionally. So happy to be here and like just sitting here in front of my microphone chatting with you is nice to establish some kind of normalcy and routine to what's been a wild day. I'm in Ottawa. Uh, a lot happened today in Ottawa in terms, like, I mean, in the NHL, but also locally, you know, there's health stuff. I went to the grocery store. That was wild. But we're here to just, like, have some fun, support each other. This is a weird time. Uh, but as you said, Lewis, it's a, it's nice to have a, a group therapy opportunity for us to all talk about what the hockey news that came out today means to us. And also just to uh, to hear the comforting sounds of one another's voices and to, I like, I hear the listener's ears. Does that make sense? Like, I know you're listening and I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for stepping in. Uh, of course, Ben is still working on his big move, so we will hear from him again very soon. But uh, really thankful to Brian and Elon for stepping in and guest hosting this week. We're really thrilled to have them. You know, basically what we wanted to do is set out to uh, allow folks to ask some questions about what to do with their leagues moving forward. We've got a lot of commissioners uh, among our listeners, of course, because the smartest people end up as commissioners of their leagues. So we've got a lot of really challenging questions here, uh, both from Twitter and from Facebook to try and sort out what we are going to do moving forward with our leagues. And obviously there's a lot that we don't know yet. Um you know, the, the NBA uh, is looking at 30 days of suspension. I imagine the NHL will follow suit or do something similar. Uh, and then we'll sort of be playing it by ear after that. So uh, we've got some questions. We'll do our best to answer them. And of course, just know that it's all subject to change potentially as news continues to come out. And you can always check in with us at Keeping Carlson at AVG Time on Ice. And we'll do our best to update you about what is going on around the league. So with that, Brian, uh, let's get started with the first question. And we had a couple, uh, we had a number in this vein. So I thought we would start with this set. Alex on Twitter, patron Jeremy, and a number of others asked, right now the semifinals have clear leaders. Uh, do we count the matches through Wednesday? There were lots of pre-playoff trades and players traded and picks traded. What do we do now? What is the next step? A similar question came in from Super Patron and Stat Attack host Marcus, which was in a similar vein. Uh, live scores and standings have changed since Monday in the last week of the regular season. Revert to those Monday rankings or keep the new ones. Okay, so let's uh, let's take it back to what Alex and Jeremy were saying. And like everyone has been saying, uh, we have our semifinals. Uh, we're ca- I guess some leagues are deciding that they're going to count the matches through Wednesday. Um, and like knowing that... So I, I, I'm actually confused, Lewis. Can you clarify? Are they ending? Like, did they decide? Like, we're just going to call it a matchup? So I think these are, if if the season is done as of now, what do we do with, you know, the stats that we've accumulated thus far in right. these matches? If there is no remaining fantasy hockey season, what do we do now? Right. So I have a feeling this is going to be a big topic for Elon and I to dig into further on Sunday. But for now, like, you know, while we're all just sort of taking in this news, the knee-jerk reaction, especially if your league is is trying to, like, figure out their response, and the cuckupful is, anyone listening who's in the cuckupful, we'll be sending an email out real soon with what our well-thought-out and deliberated approach is. Uh, but you essentially have two choices, right? You can say, oh, you have a few choices, but one of them is, say, uh, whoever was winning at the end of Wednesday is now the winner of the matchup, which, assuming head-to-head, which, personally, I don't love. I am winning my matchup right now, so I would be okay with it. 
but I don't love the idea, especially because, uh, you know, you might be, you might have planned your schedule and you might know that you're getting more games played on the back end. So that wouldn't be totally fair. Or some of your better players, like if you're a Goudreau and Monaghan owner, you're waiting for Calgary. Calgary hasn't played a game yet in the first three days. So they're playing Thursday, Saturday, and you're just waiting for those games to catch up. Um, so I don't think it's fair to totally just cut it off at Wednesday, but I know you need to have some sort of actual standings picture so that you know what to do with the trades of players and picks that happen. I mean, the players are traded and right now you're just trying to figure out the picks so that you can allocate them to the, you know, so just to give a a very tangible example, uh, you traded, uh, I don't know, Who's a guy that got traded <laughs> at a fantasy deadline? Uh, you traded, uh, who knows? Anyone can be traded because <laughs> it depends on the format of your league. Let's say Victor Olofsson was traded for like a sixth round draft pick. Um, where that sixth round draft pick happens depends on the final standings, obviously. So uh, how are you going to figure out where the team that received the, the team that received the draft pick, which like what round or what position they're going to have. I'm doing a terrible job of, of really cutting to the chase here. I think I'm just buying myself some time. Uh, Cause I've truly, I haven't settled yet. Lewis, do you have any ideas? I feel like my, my initial instinct is to revert to where you were Monday uh, before the matchup started, find a way to, to like, maybe rank the remaining teams in the playoffs by their regular season standings. Like if you made it to the semis or whatever week it is in your playoffs, congratulations. And uh, now I'm sorry. It just depends on where you finish in the regular season standings. And that's how you order your rankings. And that's how you allocate your picks. Sure. Yeah. So I, I want, kind of want to tackle this in two halves because I think the count half the week or reset question and the what to do about trade questions should kind of be discussed separately. So I think counting for the reasons that you said, I think counting the first half of the week is, is a really tough sell, especially, you know, as you said, there are some teams that haven't played yet. Think about Minnesota, think about Calgary. Uh, and then there are other teams that have already had two games between Monday and Wednesday, right? So if you have Gabriel Landeskog and Kale McCarr, obviously you are crushing your opponent who has Johnny Gaudreau and, uh, I don't know, pretend that there is someone super fantasy relevant on the Minnesota Wild right now. Oh, of course, Kevin Fiala, right? So uh, your situations are going to be vastly different from one another um, from where they are right now if we play through, you know, Saturday, Sunday here. So I really think it's a tough it's a tough call to, to go in and say, yeah, we're going to count half the week um, and that's where we are and that's where we're going to finish. So I would say that is not a route that I would take, not one that I would recommend. As far as the trades question, I do think that one is really tough. So for your example, you talked about Victor Olofsson being traded for a sixth. You know, that basically means that that sixth round pick was given away for free, assuming that there's not going to be any fantasy playoffs, right? So um, I wonder if, you know, the trade deadline deals or like anything within a week leading up to the trade deadline, I think you have to get some consensus within the people in your league. Um, I know that for the league that I run, I'm just going to kind of keep things the same, but we don't trade a whole ton. I made most of the deals and I can live with, uh, I can live with the results as they stand if we're just gonna, you know, if there's nothing left. So I'm okay with losing a few picks. I think I can rebound from that. But, you know, with these, uh, deals that they're talking about, you know, tons of pre-playoff trades, lots of players and picks. Um, my, my initial reaction, I think, would be if there's not going to be a playoff, if players knew that the, or, uh, GMs knew there wasn't going to be a playoff, they wouldn't have made those deals. So right. I think you go back, I think you go back maybe to the week before, uh, the trade deadline, try to get some consensus within your league and see if they can live with this. And again, this is all assuming that the playoff, uh, is not going to happen. But I think you try and go back and see if you can reset to that point. There's a key part you said here, Lewis, which is that no commish should be making this decision totally by themselves. Engage your league, right? I, I, I think you need some leadership from the commission. You can't just throw it wide open and say, okay, guys, what do we do? I think the commission needs to present a few options, allow, but also outline exactly how the decision is going to be made. Like, okay, here are the options I've thought of. I'm open to others. I'm still going to make the final decision, but I want to get your input or I want to get your input and we'll take two of the best options and we'll put them to a vote. And that's what we're going to decide to do. Like this, don't you don't wear the weight of this on your shoulders if you're a commish and don't let your commish uh, unilaterally decide because I mean, 
from our Dear Commish segment a few weeks back, we saw there's some very, and unsurprisingly, self-interested commishes. So uh, it's a time for if you're not a commish to keep an eye on the commish and like say, hey, let me help you. Let me be part of this decision. And if you're the commish, it's time to to also listen to your team. But I get it. Like I, I get how frustrating it is to have sacrificed, like someone on Twitter um, wrote us when I tweeted, like, how are your leagues handling it? We got like a ton of replies, um, but someone uh, really phrased it like, uh, where was it? Like, uh, I'm, I'm trying to load it up, but essentially they were like, what do you do? Uh, like, are you canceling all the trades too? What about those deadline sacrifices? And that's what people feel like they did, right? They gave up something and they got absolutely nothing in return for it. So it's a, it's a touchy subject. I don't think you need to cancel trades though, Lewis, do you? Uh, no, I don't think you would cancel. Um, you know, I, I guess it depends on what your situation is. Like, I think that, uh, you know, especially if it's lots of your picks being given away, like we have one coming up, uh, before too long, or no, I think it was, I think it was Jeremy's where he talked about basically, you know, he's in a keeper position. He's going to really take a big hit next year because he went all in on trying to win this season, right? I think he said five of his top six. Uh, draft picks he ended up trading away right you know so- and I just want to I just want to step in because I think I framed it very poorly the first time and I just want to reframe it if you okay. traded um, like your your third and fourth round picks away to be able to get uh, I don't know like Kevin Fiala or whatever to make your playoff run and then your playoff run is cut short and your league is stopped or canceled or you all share the pot or like it's just done by end of season standings anyway so your playoff matchup didn't even matter what Kevin Fiala did for you didn't even come into effect in your the season ending decision uh, losing those third and fourth round picks stings and I feel I don't know I I'm really torn what were you about to say well, I, I just think if you're not going to count, you know, if you're in the first week of your uh, playoffs or or even in the second week potentially, but you're not going to count the um, you're not going to count these first three days. I don't think that you can. Uh, I don't think you can count the deals either, right? Because they're not going to have an impact. So you really are talking about players giving away picks for nothing because it didn't influence the outcome of right. their playoff match. Right. So so I think our rule that we're trying to say is if you're negating the impact of the player acquired, then you also need to negate the pick traded, which stinks for like a rebuilding team or whatever that was like, okay, like I have this strategy, I'm going to sell, uh, I tried my best, but or like this was your plan all season long to be in a selling position, you sold, you collected picks, you're sort of st- like back where you started come the next season. Yeah, well, I, you know, and I think that it, you're right. You're absolutely right. That really sucks for the teams that are trying to, you know, rebuild and come back. But at the same time, you know, I think that the point of fantasy hockey is to is to win. And I think that the maybe, you know, the players who are thinking about doing their best and trying to win this season, I think, take a little bit of precedence over those potential rebuilding teams. There will be other ways that they can, you know, level up a bit and improve for themselves and, and draft a little better. Um, you know, I, re- I, I tend, I tend to lean towards the, uh, I tend to lean towards the side, uh, that is going for the, going for the W. Yeah. And, and I'd also suggest like for anyone making this decision first, decide what it means for the standings and then figure out what that means for the picks. Like, don't like, if you tie it all into the decision, it's going to get real complicated. So first just decide what's fairest to the remaining teams, how to work out where they finish and what prize they take home. If you have prizes. Uh, But after that, then consider what to do about picks traded and how that connects to the first decision you made rather than trying to make both at the same time. Yeah. And some of these down the line, we're going to be answering questions about people who maybe are a week or two weeks into their, uh, fi- uh, cha- championship playoff already. And if it's a cash league and they're going to split it up and give it to the people who are still playing, that's a case where I think you can let those picks stay because those players did help them end up, you know, in the money, even if it's not crowning an ultimate champion who's winning the big purse. But if it's, you know, the last four teams in are going to split the pot four ways, you know, one of the reasons they got there was because of those players that they acquired. So I think in that case, that's a spot where you can let the, um, you can let the trade stand. Okay, what else do we need to get to tonight, Lewis, on this on this very special episode of Short Shifts? 
All right. Well, this is, uh, I think this will be a quick one. Um, Brett on Twitter asks, it's finals week. I'm up three to seven, but my opponent has more games remaining. Uh, should I win or should we split the pot? And Brett has said that he is magnanimously leaning towards a split. What do you think here? Well, it's very generous of Brett to be in the position with the hammer and saying, let's do a split. I mean, you could totally say you're up 7-3. Uh, I want it. It's mine. Sorry. Like we both, it's like a coin flip, right? Like who would have thought this could happen? Uh, you each put in your plans, your time, whatever. But for all the reasons that we just talked about, I don't think that would actually be fair. I think like you could get away with saying like, well, fair is fair. Like, sorry, you got the short end of the stick this time around, but I don't think it's the morally or ethically sound thing to do. So I think it would only be fair to split. You both made it to this point. Neither one of you has beaten the other. So why should you get more of the prize than the other? Yeah, I think this one is uh, is a pretty easy decision, especially since Brett has indicated a willingness to go that route. I think you keep the peace within the league, make sure that there will be a league next season. Um, I think splitting is the right thing to do, especially as he says, the opponent has more games remaining. So it is you know, just as likely that some of those categories could split uh, switch around. If it went through to Thursday, maybe it's Brett's opponent who is in the position where he's saying, well, I'd be willing to split even though you know I've got the the whatever the five or six to four lead or or whatever the case may be. Can we all agree also in this time of need or worry or this strange new world that we live in? Can we just like, can we try and work together on this? Everyone like if you're, if you're in the lead and you're like, be like Brett say, okay, I'm good to split. Don't start a fight. Don't make a fuss. Like this sucks. Everyone hates it. No one's happy about it. Just be like, Hey, good game. Fellow opponent. And split the pot and be happy and uh, don't shake hands, though. Right, of course. Yeah, give the elbow bump, right? Uh, and yeah, I think you're right. I think, you know, I worry, I feel like there are going to be fantasy leagues that are going to collapse over these issues. Uh, and it's sad to think about, but you know, it is, it, it's uncharted waters and you're putting a lot of pressure on those commissioners to try to make a good decision. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's challenging and it's, and it's complicated for them. So, you know, give your commissioner some slack and hopefully they, uh, you know, I think the best commissioner setup is a is a benevolent dictator. So hopefully you've got one of those for your leagues. But you know, um, if you are that commission, invite your players. As, as Brian said, invite those players into the process. Let them. They're stakeholders too. They they deserve to be part of the conversation. I know we're getting into some teacher vocabulary here that I think you can ride with, Brian. Oh yeah, uh, that's exactly. It, it's a win win, right? Make it a win win. Be kind. You get what you get, and you don't get upset. Uh, what else am I trying to drop here from my from my teacher lexicon? Yeah, no, I think you're great. You've you've covered all the bases here. Um, <laughs> so we said earlier that the NBA is looking like it's going to take at least a 30 day hiatus. Uh, the NHL may be likely to follow suit. Uh, if you think 30 days is a long time to wait for hockey, imagine if that is the amount of time you had to spend waiting to see a doctor in the United States. The average wait time is 29 days, Brian. That's crazy. That is crazy. My gosh. Well, lucky for us, our sponsors at Roman uh, have spent years building a digital platform that can connect you with a doctor license in your state, all from the comfort of your home so that you can get treatment ASAP if you are suffering from a condition like erectile dysfunction or hair loss or any of the other suite of issues that Roman helps deal with. They make it convenient for you to get the treatment you need on your schedule. Just grab your phone or a computer, complete a free online visit. You'll hear back from a U.S. licensed physician within 24 hours. And if that doctor decides that treatment is right for you, Roman's Pharmacy can ship your medication to you with free two-day shipping in discreet packaging. You also get free unlimited follow-ups with your doctor anytime you have questions or want to adjust your treatment plan. With Roman, there are no commitments and you can cancel anytime. So if you are struggling with ED, go to GetRoman.com slash Carlson. Carlson is an Eric. For a free online visit and free discreet two-day shipping. That's GetRoman.com slash Carlson for a free online visit and free two-day shipping. Thank you, Roman, for sponsoring our episode and making short shifts and keeping Carlson possible. 
You know, I was thinking about like that wait time in terms that you mentioned the 29 day wait. That's like four fantasy hockey matchups. How long can one matchup feel sometimes? I think uh, that, that's going to make it feel longer. So yeah, get roman.com slash Carlson for a free online visit and the free two day shipping. Lewis, you covered it really well. Thank you, Roman. What's next, Lewis? All right, patron Jesse M. asks, eight teams have made the playoffs. Do we split the pot between the eight of them, or do we refund all managers? Uh, Patron Kevin asked a similar question. If you're the commissioner of a cash league, how do you manage if the season is really over? And finally, Daniel on Twitter, also in the same vein, two teams in the finals, what do you do? Okay, so also Twitter has been helpful to us. Like People have been sharing the ways that their league is responding one way uh the most common way seems to be we're splitting it uh we're just gonna we're we're gonna share it all whoever's left gets a piece of the pot we know that some people might be more or less deserving but hey we're working together we're all nice people we're gonna share it another uh choice that i've seen made is that everybody is taking the deciding that the pot just doubles for next season so they're leaving it all on the table and they're saying uh, whoever wins next year gets a giant prize, which to be honest, it like makes things more exciting and doesn't cost anyone anything more, but it also like unnecessarily weights the winner of ne- like next year's championship way above what any other championship would be worth. So I guess the stakes are higher. It might make for a really exciting year in fantasy. Like you might find some newly engaged owners. It's like on the new season of Survivor where they're like, we're playing for $2 million now. Forget the $1 million. Uh, and, and everyone, you know, just references that for to excuse all that awful behavior and traits that they choose to display to try and win. So maybe... I don't know, actually. Maybe that's an argument against that people are going to become too cutthroat if the stakes are too high. But I imagine the people choosing to do that are responsible enough to do it. Another option I saw, which was very nice, and I wish I had the tweet in front of me that I could cite it uh, live while I was saying this, is uh, one. there's one league who shared that they are donating their entire uh, pot to charity and that they encourage others to do the same, which I think is a really nice idea it's like okay no one earned this money amongst us Uh, we can't definitively give it to someone we could roll it over but instead uh we're just gonna part with it the way we planned on and donate it to a local charity which i love obviously that that that's a very much for me solution so uh if you do that please uh please share it with us we will give you a a pat on the back yeah, I like that a lot. I think that's a, a very nice way to approach it. I like that better than the doubling up the cash next time for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is, I think you're right, that the amount of money makes it a little worrisome about how the season might play out with people getting even more intense. I'm not willing to pay play for money outside of with strangers. I don't like to, to play uh, in any of my leagues where I know the people uh, for cash just because I think it does make things a little too extreme, a little too intense. I think, honestly, I think this is a layup. I think that the teams that are still in the playoffs split the pot. Everyone who's still got a shot at the uh, championship, assuming you're not going the extremely generous charity route. Uh, if you want to have some kind of way for managers to, to get some money out of the season, I think the teams that are remaining in the playoff, you split it equally. Everyone who's still got a shot left at winning the championship, um, you know, gets an equal part of it. I think that is the one that makes the most sense to me. The only concern that I have with this setup is that I think it'll be kind of challenging to figure out draft picks next year. If you go year by year and say, you know, okay, we'll do reverse standings to set up the draft. I think then you got to kind of go back to um, your standard end of the season, uh, regular season order ranking to figure out your draft picks there. Yeah, like that, and going back to the first question, that's going to be the really hard piece. And I honestly think, like, don't rush to a decision about that. Elon and I, with the Gigupful, are not rushing to it. Like, there's no urgency to making this decision. And my rule of thumb in life, pretty much in anything, here's a little secret about me. The secret to my success is anytime there's like an emotional or high stakes decision to make, if I can take 48 hours, I take 48 hours and I think this is a situation where you can totally do that. So you don't, you also don't need to decide to split the pot today. Honestly, I think that's probably the most equitable thing to do uh, if you're not going to give it to charity, which you're excused, like no need. Maybe you give in other ways uh, or like you also give 
not with your fantasy hockey winnings to charity. Uh, I don't want to make anyone feel bad for not doing that. But if you split the pot, great. But take some time before you figure out how to allocate picks. Collect ideas. There's no rush, people. Just take it easy. Make sure you get this decision right because it's going to be a big one. And next season... Uh, everyone's going to be thinking back to it. It's like, oh, if, if the draft pick decision was made differently, I wouldn't have been screwed this way. Like, people are going to attribute too much. So just make sure everyone's on board with it. And I, I, I feel like we're going to be answering this first question all the way through. And on Sunday and in the future, I, Elon and I will definitely be giving, like, our detailed takes. But I don't have one. I've had... Uh, like we got the news, what Lewis, like eight hours ago that the season was suspended and like, we all have our personal lives where this is also affecting us trying to manage that. So just take a beat, take a beat. No need to decide yet. That's actually my advice now. Just don't, don't decide how to handle your picks. Just take a minute. Yep. I told my league that they're not going to hear anything from me about, uh, what draft picks are going to look like or anything like that for at least a week, because there's no, there's no reason. Like we know, I mean, we don't know for sure, but I, I would find it incredibly, uh, I, I would be astonished if the league did not take at least a week off here. I think that is basically a given and that's probably the easiest bet you'll ever make. Um, so yeah, I think you've got plenty of time to decide and, you know, to give you something to chew on over the course of this time, we had a really interesting suggestion from patron Kevin with a Y. Um, he suggested what if, you know, if there's no fantasy playoffs this season, something that might, you know, work for people would be, uh, set up the same teams in a separate league in your same platform, uh, to start the next season and run your playoffs in a Yahoo league in the fall. So obviously there are some potential concerns with that. You know, it's not the same season things, players could be traded, you know, players sign elsewhere, um, whatever the case may be. But I thought that was a really creative and interesting approach. And certainly there's some potential pitfalls and maybe you can uh, share if you have any ideas about ways in which this might be um, of concern. But I thought it was a really interesting idea to uh, allow people to kind of go through. It makes the start of next season extremely exciting. Uh, it, you know, there are some issues, I think, with players who are on the IR right now or players who might be on the IR at the start of the season. You know, there's a lot of things that could go potentially wrong. But I wanted to share this idea because I thought it was really interesting. And if anyone plans to take that approach, I would love to hear about it. Like, please tweet at us. Please, um, you know, bring it up in the Facebook group if you're a patron. I think that could be a really fascinating uh, early season development is if you are having some championships uh, show up you know, in the first three weeks of next season, you know, how exciting would that make the start of the year? Uh, you've got two teams to watch and one of them is fighting for the playoffs and maybe fighting for uh, the purse. If that is the route I went, this is how I would do it. I wouldn't keep the same rosters for all the reasons you mentioned, Lewis, like deployment changing, maybe players are traded or move locations or injuries. Uh, the way I would do it is I would seed everybody in a draft, the way uh, that they finished according to their standings. And then I would have a mini snake draft amongst the remaining teams, or an auction would be even better, but that's a whole, like you could decide, (laughs) but set up a draft in September and dedicate the month of October to run it, to, to playing through your playoffs. In fact, it's almost like that's a better time. Like maybe this should just be how we do fantasy period because we know it's just silly season when you get to the end of March, early April, those last weeks that end up being the championship deciding weeks in head to head leagues. Players are sitting, players are resting, players are hurt or are they? Some teams have given up. Some teams have had seismic changes to their depth chart landscapes. It's like a shell of what the rest of the season looks like. And it's really not a representative shell at all. So I'm actually starting to warm up to this idea that I mostly just came up with now that all fantasy hockey playoffs should actually be played in the first month of the following season. Lewis, you in? Uh, I mean, I, I love your enthusiasm. I, mean, I think it's a really interesting idea. And I hope that there are some people who will try this out for us and tell us maybe how it goes. But I do have some reservations about it. I think you are just as likely at the start of the season to have people who are, you know, recovering from their double hip surgery that they put off all year so that they could win in the playoffs. You know, the, the people who um, are sitting out because their contract hasn't been negotiated the way you want. I think there are just as many pitfalls in the fall 
wall as there are in the as there are in but they're not the the same ones like sure like there's inconsistency there's unknowns like what are okay actually before i interrupt you what are these pitfalls so well, no, they're just the ones that I mentioned. You know, your Willie Nylanders are going to be Nylanders are going to be sitting out trying to, you know, get but the contract that they want. But you're You can avoid those guys. I suppose that's true. I, I guess I wasn't thinking about the I, that redraft element is interesting. I I have it's just and an, it's something. It's a gut reaction here. I feel like winning the championship with a team that is not the team that got you to that point in the season. And I know that you earned the position in the snake draft and that sort of thing. It just it seems wrong. <laughs> I, mm. I can't wrap my head around it. It just there's something innately uh, concerning about that to me that you're winning the championship with a team that you did not play with throughout the course of the year. It it just strikes me as a little bizarre. But okay, so uh, let's know, say let's, instead of a, a regular thing to do, it was just an uh, as a as an idea for under extenuating circumstances. Do you would do you like it that way? I do. And, and I think that, yeah, as emergency response to the way this is playing out, I, I do think that's appealing. And I, I actually, I think you make a good point that taking that route and being able to say, okay, I'm not going to pick up this player because they're sitting out right now. I think in this one scenario, maybe that's the, maybe that is the solution that we take. So a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a tweak on Kevin's idea. But yeah, I don't like it as the, I don't like it as the go to for fantasy in general. You know, I think that people have adapted. People have been playing for a while. They've adapted to, you know, how it gets weird towards the end of the season. I think someone in the chat brought up, of course, this is why you end the season, not in the last yeah. week when everybody sits out this is kelly so thank you kelly for bringing this up you know that's why all of your smart leagues are not going to end in the final week of the season when every skill player is you know sitting down and you're winning your championship with third liners who are up jumped into a better spot yeah that's no good this is reason but, yeah. number one to use fan tracks by the way for all the fan tracks let's acknowledge like that is why you use fan tracks and i think espm too you can customize your playoff weeks yahoo you can't you should be able to it's a travesty yeah, maybe they'll uh, maybe they'll listen to us here, and we can we can say, look, you know, look at what happened to us this season. We need to make some seismic changes uh, all throughout these leagues because we've had this strange event. Like it gives us the opportunity when there's big change. That's the chance to really um, fight fight for uh, the type of uh, alterations you want to see. All right, so we've got we've still got a couple more. Oh, and let's just shout out uh, in the chat. So Matthew says, "What if the top team of the season is already eliminated from the playoffs?" And you're out. Sorry. Like, bad luck. You couldn't hang in just long enough to get this consideration of pot splitting or, like, redrafting and competing in October. So, uh, sorry. That's it. And then we Um, also had someone in the chat. I'm sorry. I didn't catch the name when when it happened. But they said they uh, traded away all their picks this season. Like, they traded away – or like, and they're – Oh, no. Okay. I'm going to read the comment. In a keeper league, I trade in a keeper league. Oh, no. I traded six of my top seven picks. Similarly to the story you just told. I guess that was a few minutes ago now. Feels bad, but it's kind of life. So, I mean, that's a like, you know, if you have people like that in your league, this is going to be a lot easier um, for you to <laughs> for you to manage. Like if you have you- some really understanding people who are like, this is just for fun. It's okay. I can handle it. Uh, that'll make your life easier. It's definitely a good time to have Zen league mates who are willing to roll with the punches, who are going to follow the middle path and not uh, delve into the extremes on either side. Yeah, so I think that was Kevin. Way to be, way to be Zen about these uh, these issues here, Kevin. I appreciate it. All right, uh, we have two a more, two more from questions. Marcus and then Sergey and Matt. How about I'm, I'm going to ask you one, Lewis? Yeah, please, please. This, this is from Stat Attack, Marcus. Uh, weekly cats league is in the quarterfinal. The first and second seeds are on buys. The first seed was ahead by a mile in the regular season. Uh, so Marcus is asking, just reset to the end of season ranking and award the championship to number one. Yeah, I think so. I think it's safe to award the title to number one if if you are you know out of other potential options and you want to say, look, we're just going to take it back to uh, where we ended the regular season. Kelly in the chat has pointed out winning the regular season is is in a lot of ways harder than it is to get hot for a couple weeks and win a championship in the playoffs. Um, so yeah, I kind of like that idea. It's sort of the um, 
I guess it's sort of the uh, roto answer to this question is that if you come out on top of the regular season, that's how you win, right? Uh, the only danger in these cases uh, is worrying if number two or maybe someone else within striking distance at some point kind of uh, changed their strategy. They weren't worrying if they won or lost the late weeks. They were just trying to set up their team uh, with players who are going to have the best possible schedule for their playoff matchups and that sort of thing. But, you know, he said that, you know, the number one team was number one with a bullet. So I think it's a pretty safe response for other leagues that maybe are in a situation where things were a little bit tighter and some of those more complicated decisions were being made about whether, you know, yes, we're going to, you know, uh, I'll take I'll take a couple losses here at the end. It's not going to change my position. Uh, I can afford it. I'm just going to set my team up. That's a case where you might not want to go that route necessarily. But for Marcus's case, it seems pretty clear that that number one uh, is a safe title award. I don't think you get too many complaints from uh, the league about that. What do you say? Uh, I am so not in agreement with you at all. Like, Oh, uh, hey, I love I, to argue. Good. I agree that... Like, winning the regular... Listen, I say this as an Ottawa Senators fan uh, from the early aughts uh, who was jacked when they won the President's Trophy, but they didn't do it in the playoffs, and I think, like, there's something to that. I mean, I know the play Like, in the NHL, the playoffs is an unfair way to award the trophy to the league's best team. It does not demonstrate which team is actually the best, which team could beat all the others, any other team in a four-game series. A lot of it can be uh, injuries, circumstance, hot streaks, cold streaks, and I think that's okay. Uh, Like, it's kind of frustrating, but I think that's what makes it all fun, right? That you just take, you say, okay, you need to be this good to qualify, and then we throw you all in a blender, and we see who comes out at the end. Uh, So I wouldn't, even if the number one team was far and above better than the rest of the league, I wouldn't just award them the win. I would prefer to split the pot. I, I guess leagues, again, the decision you're making here is, are you giving it to one person, or are you going to give it to many? Uh, and so if you want to give it to one person, yeah, give it to the number one seed, then it's obvious. But if you feel like that's not the route you want to go and you want to say, well, we didn't know how the season would end, um, then maybe perhaps you decide to uh, split the pot with everybody and not give it. I, and I just want to some, do you, do you realize Lewis that just, uh, oh no, I was reading this wrong. That makes for a terrible podcasting. Sorry. But the last, uh, if we, oh yeah, no, no. The New York Rangers, Won the President's Trophy, like, five years ago. Do you remember that? Uh, I mean, it seems it seems <laughs> so long ago, I can hardly believe it. But I suppose, uh, I suppose it's... that, you know, uh, good on them. I obviously <laughs> didn't win the cup, right? So I just uh, we have a number one team that wasn't able to do it in the playoffs. That's a good example. What, what was that roster? Uh, I'm, I'm going to look into just... this. You can ask the next question, Lewis, and I'm going to look into the 2014. Like, that's the year they got Marty St. Louis, right? Yeah, here's my prediction, and I'm making it in honor of Ben, who is out for the time being. But my prediction is that it was just a matter of Henrik Lundqvist going totally berserk and carrying the team on his back. And, the you know, whoever was on the lines, it didn't hardly matter. If you get a couple goals, you're going to win the game. So that was actually the Lundqvist Talbot season, where Cam Talbot oh. slightly outperformed Henrik Lundqvist in almost as many games. 926 save percentage for Talbot, 922 for Lundqvist. They each had five shutouts, but Lundqvist played uh, in 12 more games. Oh, and sorry, we can't forget to mention Mackenzie Skapsky, who played two games, won them both, and gave up just one goal on 45 shots across them. And then Henrik in the playoffs, a 928 save percentage. Um, I remember them being overmatched in the Stanley Cup final, though. This must have been the year that they... uh, Oh, no, they lost in the conference finals to the Lightning. Anyway, I I clearly know so much about the the 14-15 Rangers as I bumble my way through this Rick Nash their leading scorer followed by Derek Brassard Derek Stepan Marty St. Louis at least I had that right and then it's Zuccarello Chris Kreider Kevin Hayes uh, Dan Boyle was on this team (laughs) how how deep are we going here (laughs) like it's just like Anthony DeClaire was on the team and like uh, they couldn't win with him it's a it's just it's amazing that that season is not so far removed but the Rangers like already seem like they're on the cusp of a new rebuild. We we've talked about their quick rebuild though. 
Of course. Absolutely. Okay. So my point was that if we were if we were giving it to the number one team at the end of a season just because Tampa, Nashville, Washington, Washington, Rangers, Bruins, Chicago, Canucks, Canucks would have been the last 10 uh, Stanley Cup winners if all seasons had been suspended right before the playoffs. What a horrible thought. <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> So, so given that situation, then what if all the people in Marcus's league say uh, it makes sense? We should award it to the number one team. So, can, sorry, can you say that one more time? Yeah. So, what if what if the ultimate decision, you know, within the league is, you know, if we find ourselves in this situation again, and we'll do it for this season too? Because you are setting a precedent, like. Heaven forbid such a thing happen again, but, you know, I think that you want to say this is the plan now for anything like this happening again in the future, Um, and they say, we think that the person who deserves to win is the number one seed after the regular season. Are you okay with that? Huh. If if democracy, you know, are you worried about the tyranny of the masses here? (laughs) No, I can handle the, trust me, I can handle the tyranny (laughs) of the masses. Uh, I just... I like playoffs. I like to have playoffs if we can have playoffs. That's my first choice, but I understand you're 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 looking at a precedent setting example. Like I it's justifiable. Yeah. Do you advise uh Marcus's league to take the Kevin route and may, or the the Kevin Brian Com fusion special here and, and play their playoff in October? I mean, I want them to do that for my own personal entertainment. If yes. I was a member of the league, like that would be really fun. But if I took it seriously and like really didn't want to lose, uh, I'd find that frustrating. So I would, I would go pot split. I, I think pot split is the most sane, equitable choice for really any league stuck with a bunch of teams still competing in the playoffs. If the playoffs I- have started, if they haven't started yet, give it to the top team. That's fine with me. Okay. Yeah. So I think I think the pot split approach is definitely going to be the one that uh, keeps the most people happy. Uh, you know, a good compromise uh, leaves everyone a little bit mad. But as you know, everyone's heading away with a little something in their pocket, wishing that they had more. That's a little bit more tolerable, probably, than seeing one person walk away with it all if they don't really agree. Yeah. We have we have one more question, and I think this is also one about keeping your league together and not having everyone quit on mass. Uh, this was posed by patron Sergey as well as Matt on Twitter. Basically, the question was, you know, is it time to grab up all of the IR players who were dropped and who, you know, are injured now and would have been injured through the playoffs, but might be, you know, uh, back for the season if, if, you know, the season resumes sometime uh, later in the spring. Uh, so Sergey went out and grabbed a bunch of those out of the seasons uh, who might now have time to recover. His league mates are upset with him. Do they have a point uh, or are they just jealous that they didn't think of it first? Are they just mad that they don't get up early enough in the morning to beat Sergey to the punch? So I don't know. Is this the right analogy to make if it's like uh, everybody's going nuts buying toilet paper, right? Like toilet paper is gone all over the world. Uh, I, I was you, at the store today. I can say safely that toilet paper stores are running low. <laughs> okay. Um, and Sergey is the guy who, when he heard about the, the virus, went out and bought like 10 things of toilet paper. And then you've got uh, poor Lewis going to the grocery store, like just happened to be out of toilet paper and uh, it's gone. It's not there for you, even though like you legitimately need it. And Sergey's just sitting on this mountain of toilet paper that he's not using until like for another like, I don't know, 18 months. He's going to take him to go through it. And it was just like, I just need one roll, man. Like, help me out. Help me get through the next week. Uh, Is that a fair analogy here? I'm bummed that you went with a toilet analogy when there's a great office one line there. Sergey is Dwight going out and buying up all of the princess unicorn dolls uh, and then selling them for a huge profit. Fa la 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 ka ching. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> listen, I, I think there's got to be some kind of group consensus with this. I think that Sergey is running the risk of blowing up his league potentially because there could be some very upset feelings. Maybe it's all for nothing. If there's no rest of the season, then Sergey just looks like a smart guy who decided yeah. to use the system to his best. Yeah, I just want to um, like I I respect and appreciate Sergey's resourcefulness, resourcefulness and industriousness. Like that was smart, like a clever move. Um, 
And like, it's not unfair. Everybody had the same opportunity. It's not, it's not exactly like the toilet paper. We couldn't all run to Costco the moment we heard that toilet paper was running low or that they got, do you know that new shipments are being like announced and shared within like social media? Anyway, um, what, what, what was that you can talk? Oh yeah. I appreciate what Sergey did. I think it was a smart move. Um, it's just, you got, you have to know your league, right? Is everyone playing that hard or do you just need to like, ah, uh, you know, like it's really cool that you covered yourself. No one else was really ready for that. Uh, brilliant move. But do you mind if we just reset it? Because it, it is, it really, uh, unlevels, it really tilts the playing field towards Sergey if, and when the season does resume in a way that probably isn't fair, like, because he had like a 30 minute, 30 minute, 30 minute moment of brilliance where he just went scooping up all the injured players uh, who are going to be healthy if, and when the season resumes and they're the ones who rides to a championship. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't feel right. Yeah, I mean, I think it's outstanding to be the smartest strategizer in your league, and I think that you should use every tool that's at your disposal. Um, but, you know, I think this is such a unique case that you really don't want your league mates to quit in fury. I told my league that I commission, uh, they have 24 hours to hit the waiver wire if they want to pick someone up, and then I'm going to sweep in and just scoop up anyone that I want. So I gave them a head start. Uh, and I'll let them peruse. You know, I feel pretty good about my team. I think that the the marginal difference in value is not going to be all that much. That's a that's a position that I'm happy to take. Uh, it seemed like the sporting approach. Um, I think for Sergey, you know, who may be you know wanting to be a little more cutthroat, and I think that's okay. Like, what if uh, you know they can set up a system where Sergey gets to keep the first guy he grabbed, and then we have the rest of everybody picking. Um, from the waiver wire and Sergey does not blow his waiver wire position uh, by grabbing that first player that he did. Um, but that sort of opens things up to be a little more fair. And, you know, maybe Sergey is third in the waiver wire. So he's going to get one of those other guys that he really wanted anyway. Sure. Um, I thought that might be a way that he could approach it where uh, his league mates are not going to be furious with him, but he also gets to enjoy some of the benefits of, of being the sharpest tack on uh, uh, behind the, the GM's desk. True. You could argue that this is why you save your fab or this is, why you save your waiver priority because uh this is the this is this is one of those moments it's a a crazy moment that's never happened before but that is why you say because you don't know what's going to happen totally expect the unexpected you have it just in case you didn't spend it during the season so maybe you can take advantage of having it now um but Sergey said his league makes are mad. And I think like he needs to respect that. Like maybe they're mad and maybe they shouldn't be. They all had the same chance, but uh, you used the word sporting Lewis. And I think that was the right word. It's just like, okay, like Sir, Sir, Sergey can be like, I gotcha. All right. Everybody admit I gotcha. And then I'm going to drop the players <laughs> back and we can start fresh and let's just make a rule. Like no one can add these guys. Like they're, they're just gone from the pool. Yeah, that's a d- another interesting approach, certainly. Uh, you know, I think it's always kind of a bummer to have people who are restricted and out, but I suppose it's the same with teams that have been eliminated. You know, their team is full of interesting players who aren't going to be doing anything that really matters. So, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Brian, I think we are through our first uh, hockey apocalypse, uh, you know, therapy session here. Are you feeling a little better? I do. I feel better having, like, talked about the possibilities, and I hope people feel better having heard them and I'm going to repeat the biggest piece of advice because you're probably frustrated at some points where you ask like, what to, what should I do with my picks? I don't know. Let me think about it. And you should be saying the same thing to your league. Just the hold on. Don't make, don't make a decision. And I think on Sunday, this is going to be one of the things Elon and I continue to talk about. And also to our couple participants, we're going to, we're going to deliberate. We're going to take some time, figure it out. And uh, we invite your feedback in the meantime at keeping Carlson for sure. Uh, if you like, if you have ideas from what you heard, uh, keep tweeting us. Let us know how you're filling in uh, this hole in your life. And uh, congratulations! If this is the end of the season, let me take this opportunity opportunity to congratulate everybody on a season well played. Yeah, absolutely. You know, not the way that anyone wants their season to end, but uh, hopefully we had some fun along the way and we'll, we'll find a way to muddle through this, this craziness here. Um, you know, again, we think the NHL made the right decision, even though it sucks for fantasy. It's a bummer, but you know, uh, keeping people safe is obviously the number one priority. And hopefully we can look back at this and say, yeah, that was a bit of an overreaction. Things didn't get as bad as maybe we thought they would. So. 
uh, that's that's the ideal scenario is that we look back and say, you know, they went maybe a little further than they had to, but uh, I think it's the right choice here. Thanks, everybody who tuned in with us live. Thanks, everybody who is listening on their platform of choice, uh, you know, as this comes into their feeds. Uh, thank you for putting up with the live show so it's not as uh, edited and polished as we typically are. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed it. You got some uh, uh, something positive to walk away from this with, uh, and you're feeling a little better about the way the fantasy hockey season uh, may have just come to an end here uh, in in spectacular fashion on a uh, Thursday uh, afternoon. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, come, we're trying to end on an optimistic note, Lewis. Try again. No, I, th- I think, well, all right. So uh, we will <laughs> we will see you again soon. Uh, we'll, we'll keep coming at you with more content. There's plenty to talk about. Uh, but until we see you back here, uh, play smart and keep your shifts short.